morning, everybody. Good up, evening. Morning. Hello. So, uh, sorry, I just uh, ran in the door. So, uh, apologies for that. But I'm glad to see uh, everybody. Uh, we, I think we can wait a couple more minutes. How's everybody doing? Hello. <laughs> yeah, I know uh, um, we've got schools starting up soon-ish. I guess they've started, but you know, uh, in person October 1 or something along the lines of that. Yeah. Um, so I, I know that that impacts uh, many of us. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm so excited about the school year that has begun. Uh, I think we're still waiting for, uh, let's see, Sid and Cedric. Matthew, you're wearing a tie. Does that mean you're you're back in person? I'm back in person. Yes, yes. It's uh, it's definitely, um, it's definitely different to see people all the time and to be wearing a mask all the time. So uh, I, I see all my students, but I have to try to remember who they are. I try to say something that I think is funny and they're not sure if I'm joking or not because I've got a mask on. Um, so I'm, I'm working through it, trying to, to get used to it at some point, but, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, we, we keep our distance. Everyone stays six feet apart. Um, a student tried to show me an outline earlier today and as she put it down in front of me, I stepped two feet back and said, no, 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 you can, you can leave it there and then you step away and I'll come look at it. And, so yeah, we're, we're trying to make things work, but, but it's definitely different than it's ever been um, before. Yeah, it takes a while to get used to this new reality. I, um, I find that it's feeling terrible <laughs> to be on site. It's really, really hard. Are, are you on site though? You? We've been back in the facility since July 1st and it feels terrible. <laughs> just like wearing a mask all the time and I don't know it's just it's hard it's intense well you know I know for me I, I carry my germ key with me everywhere to open up doors and so on I'm trying to keep oh, myself healthy wow. I haven't yeah. I, wh where'd you get that um I ordered it online I, I don't want to admit to ordering from Amazon because I know that that's not the always the right thing to do but um, but basically just admitted to ordering from Amazon. So is that what it's called? It's called a germ key. It's called a germ key. Oh um, my God. Yes. CVS. You got it at CVS? They have them at CVS on University Drive, or at least they did a few weeks ago. Like by the register. I'm going to have to get one. Yeah. Cause it's like you go to the bathroom, you wash your hands and then, you know, you can use the towels to open the door, but then you have to go in another door and then it's like, oh my God, I got to wash my hands again. <laughs> yeah. Just like you're using so much water, we're in a drought. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope everybody and, and everybody's families and friends are doing okay, um, both with this uh, COVID thing here and um, with other issues that we're, we're dealing with. Um, I, I know I have friends uh, who out in California thought, they would leave their home on, on a day that was like 170 degrees outside because if they got in their car, 
they would have air conditioning. And then they drove into San Francisco, they went to get ice cream, they got ice cream, it was a big family treat. Then they re realized that they didn't have visibility to see to get back home. And so they needed to, uh, to sit in their car for another two hours until the winds shifted so that they'd be able to, to get home after going out for ice cream. So, um, so yeah, things, things were tricky out there. Um, all right. I was hoping that we could wait until uh, everyone was here. And I'm just going to check my email and see if, uh, if I'm hearing from anybody else. But um, I think that we should probably start, even though I was uh, hoping that we could do introductions to each other. This is uh, the first time that we have our new contingent on with us. So I thought uh, we could all introduce ourselves briefly uh, and, uh, and get started with that so that we could welcome our new members. Um, I want to say hi to them. Uh, hi, Erica. Hi, Liz. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and how thankful we are to have you join us. Um, I'm going to introduce myself uh, again, I, although I think I've introduced myself to everyone before. Matthew Charity. Uh, I've been chair of the commission now for, I think, three years. Uh, and uh, I, it, my day job is teaching uh, law down at Western New England University. And, um, you know, right now, I think uh, we're, I'm just happy that kids are, are back in school and I'm excited for us to, to move forward and, and continue working with the town. I would say who's next because I, I can't, uh, um, I know that we're all in different orders uh, for each other. Do you wanna just call someone's name and because you can <laughs> see the screen and just do it that way? I mean, we all have sure. a different screen so we're not all talking at the same time. That's a good point. That's a good point. And can we just go back and go back to this as being recorded? We just need to. Yes. So the things that you share about yourself are probably things that you should feel comfortable um, being out in the public. Um, uh, Gazit Kaya, do you want to um, introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Gazit Chaya Nikosi. Gazit Chaya is my first name, um, so it's two words. One name, and I use they, them, theirs pronouns, and I um, have been on the commission for like a year now, um, and I have a nine-year-old who um, is supposed to go to Crocker Farm, but is currently doing school in our living room and uh and what else i live at the brook and um i've been living in amherst for like almost 16 years now and um i was particularly interested in trying to see what getting involved in town government was like um specifically around concerns um around like just representation um, in town government for communities of color and low income um, families that I feel like are not typically represented. Um, and so it's been an eye-opening experience. I will say that. Yeah. I'm glad to meet you, um, Liz and Erica. Um. Ben, do you want to go next? Sure, I'll go next. So I'm Ben Harrington. I've been in Amherst 13 years at this point. Let's see, I, I know the two new members. <laughs> so, uh, right, I'm, I'm same person, you guys. <laughs> Still Andre and Safi's dad and stuff like that. So, But yeah, I'm looking forward to, to working with you guys this year. I've been on for a year. It's been yeah, eye, eye opening, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Um uh Deb, what about you? Sorry. 
Sorry, that took me a minute. Um, well, hi everybody. Welcome to Erica and Elizabeth. Uh, my name is Deb Neubauer. I've been on the commission for a year. I've been living, oh, well, I've been living in this greater Amherst area for decades. I won't even say how long. Um, but I have been, then my family and I moved into Amherst, I think it was 2014. So, and this is my first experience volunteering in the town. So, um, eye opening. That's a nice, non specific way thing to say. So, I'll stick with that. That's a good thing. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, I won't, yes, I'm just gonna stick with that. <laughs> the Human Rights Commission is, um, it is, it is great to consider issues that impact the, the you know, the, the feeling of safety and inclusion in our community. So welcome to new members. Great, thank you. Uh, Petua. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm Petua. The new mem members already know me. They probably taught me. They taught me already. Um, I'm a young person. Um, I'm a senior in high school now. So yeah, that's mostly what I do. <laughs> and um, yeah, the Human Rights Commission. I've been on it for about a year, and it's also been eye-opening. Um, and yeah, I'm glad I'm here because like I wanted to know what government was about, and I also um, and I'm interested in what the Human Rights Commission does for the town, so, yeah. Thank you. Um, and uh, Liz Haygood, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to us, please? Okay. Can you hear me? I always check. So my name is Elizabeth Haygood. People call me Liz. I go by she, her, hers pronouns. Um, I've been living in Amherst officially since um, 1980. I came up here to go to UMass from Cambridge, Massachusetts, where I grew up. I have um, two sons and they both work at the schools. One is a para at the high school, one's a para at the middle school. I have four grandchildren. One will be in seventh grade at the middle school well, when they go. One will be at, is a sixth grader at Crocker Farm, and I have a two-year-old grandson and an almost one-year-old granddaughter. Um, I work at Amherst Regional High School as a PE and health teacher. I'm also the activities director for the after-school clubs and activities at the school. I run the prom and graduation rehearsal and this is my last year there. So I wanted to venture into something new. Um, I've done a lot of work as Petua and a lot of others know uh, with People of Color United, um, with our young people. They are my focus and my joy. And um, I'd like to branch out to um, working with the town that I come to love and respect um, even when it hasn't always loved and respected me. I'll leave it at that. Fair enough, and thank you. Um, Erica, can uh, you introduce yourself as well, please? Um, hi, a few of you know me. Um, my name is Erica. I'm a para at the high school. I've lived in Amherst, Shrewsbury area since mid 80s. Um, on and off between here and Ohio. Um, so I went to college here, went to high school here, raised my son, who's now 20. Um, here, I volunteered with athletics in the community, from suburban to high school sports. Um, I worked with the youth in a couple different other channels. Um, and having a conversation this summer with Jen, you know, and others, it sounded like a cool opportunity to, now that my kid's grown, to branch off and do something else. Well, um, thank you for coming and joining us. Um, 
Jen, do you want to uh, introduce yourself? Obviously, we all know you, but. Um, yeah. Hi, Liz. <laughs> Hi, Erica. Welcome. I'm very excited to have you guys join us. Great. Um, we also have uh, Paul with us. Uh, he is going to join our discussion of um, the uh, Town Safety Committee. Um, and uh, Paul, you can say hi if you'd like to, Paul. Yeah, so, so uh, I'll just say hi, but I will then exit until you're ready for me to, I'm not a member of the commission, so um, I'll, be, I'll be dimming my lights uh, until you're ready for me. All right. And thank you all for being here. It's an it's important time. Well, thank you. All right. Um, so getting back to the, uh, the meeting for tonight, uh, I don't know if, um, I don't know if Cedric or Sid are going to make it. So um, I think we should continue. Oh, Jennifer, did you have something? I do. So I just realized because my son is with him. They're doing a, he's, he's at practice. So hopefully it ends at seven. So hopefully he'll be on right after. They're okay. at, um, they're running skills for football. Okay. Um, great. So um, as part of uh, moving forward, I guess we need to see if there's anything to add to the agenda. Um, I think, again, we're going to try to uh, have this go until about eight o'clock, so only an hour and a half. Uh, during that time, we're going to discuss moving forward uh, with uh, involvement in uh, further conversations on the equality of Black lives and on the COVID pandemic. Uh, again, we're going to talk about the Town Community Safety Committee as well. Um, we also have uh, minutes. Right now, uh, what I have done is I took uh, some really, really wonderful notes that, uh, that Deborah Neubauer had put together and truncated them um, so that they only reflect what we uh, what we had on the agenda, what we, um, you know, if we were reporting on something, then that report, uh, and then any votes that uh, we took, as well as the results of that voting, um, without a full report of everything, without um, a kind of uh, moment by moment uh, description, although it's, it pains me to take something that actually shared so much information to make it smaller. But one of the things that uh, this helps us do is uh, see exactly what it is we can vote on, what it is we actually have, uh, have authority on, what we are approving and what we cannot, uh, what we are not approving and, and that type of thing. So it limits uh, the discussion to um, the events that we're sponsoring and the uh, the actions that we're taking. So uh, I don't know if anyone has had a chance to review the July 16th, uh, 2020 minutes. Uh, if so, um, again, this is not to say that this is, is a perfect uh, result, but it, it's, it's something that is a much shorter version of what we uh, would typically need to post to say what we're doing as the Human Rights Commission. Um, were there any questions about, about that uh, prior to us talking about whether to take a vote on approving uh, this kind of more truncated version of what had been really great notes of the meeting? Is there a motion to approve then the, uh, the July 16th, 2020 minutes? Um, Matthew, can I just ask a quick question? Um, that conversation just felt like such an important conversation, which is why it is so incredibly detailed. What is, yep. will, is there a possibility to include both versions? 
so that people who, you know, on the off chance that someone would want to really understand what we, what we discussed. Um, I, I think as far as posting the meeting minutes, um, we can, we can choose whether we feel comfortable posting notes of a meeting. Um, I think that sometimes if we get something uh, a little bit different or we make an, we express something that we don't really intend to express as the commission or it's not our role to express it, uh, that might come across more in longer notes. So I think we need to be thoughtful about that but there's nothing wrong with us later um, choosing to, uh, to share notes if that's something we choose to do. Gazit I was just gonna say Deb, that um, everybody can watch the meetings because right now they're all been recorded. So if somebody wanted to like just be in the meeting, they could go and um, watch that recording. So I think for these ones that have been recorded, I don't think we have to worry so much because people can just actually experience the meeting. And I think it's a good point to why it's worth considering like continuing this past COVID because I think having the recordings is a really helpful tool for people who can't always attend, you know, these meetings at various times. It gives more access so that people can see the meat of the conversation and not just, you know, what usually ends up being very sparse minutes. Uh, is there a motion to uh, approve the minutes? Can I make the motion even though I wasn't at the meeting or do I have to have been at the meeting? I think that we, at this point, um, we can just make the motion to approve because uh, there's been such turnover since that, that time that, uh, you know, it, in order for it to, to be approved, uh, it would just be be me, Petua, um, Sid, and uh, and Deb, I think, yeah. So it would be if the four of us, but it would require um, all of us just being there at the same time. So if if we want to start posting the, the minutes, I think it makes sense for you to approve, it, uh, to, to vote if you want to. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. All right, is there a second? Um, I'll second the motion. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? <laughs> okay. All right. So that's uh, four approving, three abstaining. Um, great. Thank you. Um, so then moving back to the agenda. Um, I'm not seeing that we have uh, participants for public, I, I do see that there is uh, one participant. I, um, we're in our public comment period. So if, uh, if anyone in the public would like to, uh, to bring anything to our attention at this time, that would be great. And if you're on a phone, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine. And I just want to tell the new commissioners when people speak in public comment, we don't, we can't respond back to them because it's not on our listed agenda. Um, and as we have an open meeting, uh, people can attend and they don't have to comment right now. But uh, as noted at the bottom of the agenda, um, this is the time that we do set aside. Uh, and so if, if we uh, don't hear during the public comment period, we're not able to kind of open it up for public comment again later. Okay, um, so I'm not seeing hands up. Um, and I don't know if anyone has any uh, individual reports to make um, about anything that they've been involved in that they think uh, the commission should be aware of. 
uh, but if, if you have things that you've been involved in individually that you'd like to share with the commission that you think uh, implicates our role or, or um, something that you think was important that you were doing um, as a commissioner, I think it would be great for us to hear. Ben? Yeah, I kind of sort of do. I have like a, sh not a shameless plug, like a, the opposite of shameless plug. But um, so yeah, the, I'm involved with the school equity task force and kind of have an alignment here in, in terms of work. So I just wanted to, to kind of extend an open invitation to every one of the commissioners to try to get some folks involved, like folks who are, I don't want to say right-minded, but you know, they're human rights minded. We'll go there. Thanks very much, Ben. Ben, do you mean that you're looking for new members of that committee? Act actively looking for new members, yes. And what are the requirements of members? Yeah, yeah you have to be able to talk and listen. No, there, there are really no requirements, but like, like having a connection to the schools is, is preferable. But there's, like there's is no. the meeting once a month or? They're supposed to be once a month, but I mean, there's kind of been a lot going on lately. So they've, they've been more, I'd say bi-weekly at this point. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? Um, I just wanted to share that uh, a second round of the rental assistance um, applications are going to be going out in, I think, in like the next week or two. Um, that's a COVID-related rental assistance program. Um, and I had the opportunity to meet with John Hornick and the organization who's helping them run that, um, and just to talk about how there were some accessibility issues with the first application. Um, they didn't have like, you know, as many applicants as they expected. So I'm hopeful that um, some of the feedback will make the application um, just easier for people to fill out. Um, but please spread the word um, that it's available. And um, I think the information can be found through the, um, what's his committee called? John Hornick's on the Affordable Housing Trust, I think it is called. Um, so that's something for people to spread the word about. And then the other thing I just um, want us to keep on the radar is that, you know, it's only the first week back to online or to online learning, but like for my nine-year-old, I took the day off of work yesterday and there was no piece of the five and a half hours where I could have stepped away. Like, it was so intensively like they needed a, an adult support. Um, and I'm just hearing a lot of concern from families around how it's going to be at all possible um, when attendance is being taken. And so many kids are, you know, half of Galileo's class was without adults and just completely lost and unable to make transitions between the Google meetings and I feel like it's a real concern for families um, in our town right now to figure out ways for parents to be able to work and kids to be able to have some sort of something from school. Um, and then the last thing was a, a good news is that the school lunch has been extended until at least December um, to bring to the complexes, but that's something that's kind of like tenuous. Um, so for um, us to be aware and people to be aware to continue to advocate for um, that to stay on course, because um, I know it has something to do with like USDA and it's complicated. Um, so we'll, families need advocacy around that. Liz. Hi. Um, the Hampshire County um, District Attorney's Office 
is looking for people who are interested in becoming part of their um, pilot restorative justice program where people will get together that to settle disputes before they have to go before a judge or so that they don't have to go before a judge. There's an application and a training that you would have to do and it would ask you when are you available if they if you was needed and it would be something like five to 12 hours for the year. So if anybody's interested in that, they can contact Becky Michaels at the DA's office or they can email me and I can forward the information. Are, are, is that opportunity a paid um, or is it volunteer work? It's, it's a volunteer position. Okay. Right now. It's a pilot, so who knows what will happen later. Uh, and for the training, do you know uh, if there are age restrictions or um, any other qualifications? Um, the only qualification, she, well, you have to be an adult. And the other qualification is that you have to live in Hampshire County. Is, right. um, is this going to be online, virtual, or remote, or in person? The training is virtual. And I'm assuming that things will be online. I mean, yeah, until things settle down as far as the pandemic. Thank you. Um, so just a reminder that uh, obviously if there are other things that you're hearing, I don't know if uh, anyone has heard anything concerning about uh, the, the voting choices that uh, we've made as far as um, having a number of people going to the high school. I understand that um, our, our town clerk has done what, what uh, she felt could be done within the time frame uh, she had, uh, but please do encourage people to uh, vote early um, if, if they have the opportunity to do so to make sure that we're keeping people as safe as we can during this period. Um, there's, uh, yes, Kazi, hi. I forgot. Got one more thing on the topic of uh, voting. I have been talking with um, Mindy Dom's office about there's no uh, application for mail-in voting in Portuguese as of yet because the state doesn't mandate that as one of the languages. So if anybody feels so led to um, send an email in support of them creating a Portuguese form because we have a large number of Portuguese uh, speakers in our community. That's great. Um, so uh, in addition to all of these other issues that are happening around us, um, I, I do want to get to the role of commissioners. I thought it was important for us to do that, um, particularly as we have new people coming on. I also, though, uh, wouldn't mind holding off on that if, if Cedric is going to be on his way uh, to having that conversation once he's here. So. Uh, at, at the risk of, of losing things and trying not to, um, I'm wondering if we can talk a little bit about planning uh, as we move forward. It's my understanding that the town agreed not to hire uh, new police officers, um, that there were two positions uh, that, that were considered, uh, that were requested and that the town council said, uh, we need to have a better understanding of what the resources are that could be uh, allocated in other ways. And uh, to that end, and to understand how people feel about policing the town, uh, that there is a going to be a town community safety committee uh, that is starting up. Um, if we could talk a little bit about, about what that means, um, Paul could probably explain it best to us. So uh, he has volunteered to come and present to us today, which is very kind. Uh, Paul, would you speak to us a bit about that? Sure. Um, so I'm not sure if you've seen the memo. I should have sent that out to everybody in advance. Um, so the, this, the, the town council has with, asked uh, and instructed to withhold filling two police officers positions until we do what just what Matthew said, look at 
alternative ways of providing um, services uh, that don't require a police officer. And I think, you know, the number of people are very interested in looking at this. And the question was, um, how do we go about doing that? And, you know, typically, um, you know, town manager would either assemble staff or have an advisory committee or something like that. But in this topic, um, we were try trying to figure out how to engage a, um, a committee that had majority of BIPOC members. And, um, and it really was, while well, the charter, which is our town law, says the town manager is the appointing authority, um, you know, how do we have sort of a um, arm's length ex um, way of, of appointing the people who are gonna be doing that work? So the way to do that in my mind was to establish a second committee that would be the ones who would be looking at it. Um, and so I, that is what I, I looked at with the council. And so this will be a committee that will interview people who will be on this committee. Um, the concerns that they, you know, we talked about this at the town council meeting on Monday. Uh, they had some concerns, a number of concerns expressed were basically, should these meet meetings be public or not public? Um, in the sense that, um, and I have this set up as being a public meeting so anybody can observe what this committee is doing. This is the second committee that's doing the actual work. Uh, the second, um, one of the questions um, uh, went out of my head. Um, uh, So it's public versus non-public. Um, anyway, I just forgot what, what the other ones are. I didn't bring, bring my paperwork down. down. Um, so in sort of getting feedback, if you have, if anybody has feedback on that, that report, I'd really appreciate that. Um, so, um, <laughs> sorry, just, just got distracted here. Um, so, so one I, second. I can just say that uh, that Jennifer did share the uh, the report, so that was something that we received uh, in in our mailings for for this meeting. So, um, so we what we're trying to do is get this moving as quickly as possible. After Monday's meeting, I'll be doing a call out for people who are interested. I've already reached out to a number of people. Um, several dozen uh, people who've been, and then and other people sending me additional names saying reach out to these folks and people are starting to weigh in. Um, you know, I'd like to get a broad number of people who are, who are um, from the town, they have to be a resident of the town who are able to participate on both committees um, to help review what, what the, how we're gonna go about studying this thing. Um, there's a fair amount of work that's already been done on terms of looking at how other cities have approached this. You know, there's the CAHOOTS program in Eugene, Oregon. Denver has a program. Albuquerque has a program. Um, there are consulting firms out there who have done this with other communities. Um, but we really wanted to do it so that um, uh, we are, it's sort of let, scientifically based so that people are, um, you know, we can survey people, we can really um, not just rely on anecdotal stories, but actually um, reach into the community through a community organizing tool um, to listen to what people's experiences are with the police department. So we understand when should they not be there? And, you know, are we over policed or, um, and what is the experience of the people who are at the receiving end? The goal of this is to make sure people are feeling that they are, um, in a safe community and they're being able to be fulfilled without interference by the town government as well. So, something along those lines. Uh, Erica? I have a, actually have a question because I've listened on to a couple different things. Um, are we as a town and as a community also reaching out to UMass Police Department and Amherst College um, because I know a lot of our youth of color have added, had issues with UMass Police Department. So I'm wondering if there's any way that we could invite them to be a part of this 
in any way, I guess? Yeah, that's a really good question. I have not addressed that, Erica, um, but it's something I think this group might want to say. They want to make that part of their mission. Um, I mean, I think the the most important thing is for us to focus on our own staff and the things that we control ourselves. Um, but I think that broader conversation with the university, especially, is important. And I, I agree. We sh I agree with that, but I just want to put it out there that yeah. The university yeah, you know, has, <laughs> I've heard I, a lot of stories. <laughs> yeah, you know what's so yes, I didn't even think about that. That's great that you made, because I, I had heard stories, but I never connected the two that we should be addressing them. That's, so thank you. Thank you. Liz? Um, I have. Oh, sorry, oh, Petua. Sorry. sorry. Uh, nope. OK, OK. Um, I have a uh, just one question, I guess, for now. Um, and it kind of also pertains to like the youth uh, or college student perspective um, in in this like process because like I I've been I've done some research on like the school to prison pipeline and mm -hmm. the ways that man manifests in different ways and I was wondering if that is also being considered um, with this committee or um, like is there room for like say someone like me to be on a committee like that um, like this committee so. Yeah. So, so, um, so one of, one of the things that, I, I, as you were talking, that this other thing popped in my head was, I think uh, Dr. Shabazz had suggested that instead of having one committee that has sort of two missions, we might want to have two committees working side by side, and that's something that's a really intriguing idea. And I think one of those things, um, you know, the first committee is really about. Uh, I have a, I have a, the, the town council has instructed me to come back to them with a recommendation by January 31st. And that's sort of a really tight deadline. And I need to meet that in terms of what are we going to do on this, this sort of narrow thing. But I think the bigger questions that you're raising are something that I had anticipated the same committee staying together and then moving towards working through the rest of the 2021. But then um, at Monday's meeting, um, Dr. Shabazz said, sort of said, why don't you think of two committees who can work in parallel? And I thought that was a pretty intriguing idea because there's probably going to be a lot of interest in both of these things. Um, so, um, so it could be something, but it really, I think the, our very first focus, and I, and I want to keep it relatively narrow so that it's, we can be successful, is about policing and how we deliver police services. I think there's a unique moment that we can actually make a change and how we fund things and how we respond to certain incidents. And we're learning that already through the, um, this COVID-19 call-in number that Jen handles some of the calls. And there are people who don't wanna call the police. They wanna call the, but they wanna tell someone about what's going on. And right now, this is mostly people wanting to talk about COVID-19 things, but it, it does reveal that there's um, a, a need for some other avenue for people to express what their concerns are. Liz. Um, I just had my hand up be, and Petua kind of hit on one of the things that I was going to talk about or ask was about the involvement of some of our young people. I know there's a number of young activists at the high school anyway, um, for a variety of different reasons. And I'm sure that they would love to be involved in some kind of dialogue about the town in which they are living. Mm -hmm. And the other one is just to piggyback on what Erica said about um, how we interface with the college police departments. Um, I have a concern about the number of off-campus things that our police department has to go through for people who are visitors in our house. And um, that report last week about the long weekend and about $9,000 in fines and the police being very busy and how does, how does that all work together as far as who we need to hire or train to keep us safe and in what is their involvement with the community that lives here and how that works with the community that's just visiting for a little bit. And when you say just visiting, you're thinking, you're, is that a reference to students? Um, referencing students that, you know, 
come for a couple of years, go to school here and then mm -hmm. away. Yeah, so I think I think everything can be on the table right now. The way the town is set up, we have one tool. We have a police officer, an armed police officer, and a cruiser to respond to any call that we cut that comes in, and it's the only thing that's set up twenty four hours a day. All the calls that come in go get filtered through that, um, and uh, and I think the police officers will say they and we train them well, and I'm you know, but I think that you know they would be the first ones to say we don't need to show up. For some of these things and it's not and so i think you know it when one of the things that COVID 19 has revealed to us is that what a sort of um how pathetic our social service support system is uh, for people in the town of amherst and i think that's something that's really um become very apparent um during this period of time hmm. so um I think we talked uh, some months ago about the fact that if if there's an issue of creating more uh, work, more um, space for uh, other work to be done in Amherst outside the police department, that we would probably need some months uh, to discuss it. And I'm so glad that there's a committee that's being formed that is really going to have that focus and uh, really help us reconsider what we're using uh what policing means in our town i think that's incredibly helpful um because hi I, I started speaking and then saw your hand pop up please um so i just wanted to mention real quick that i heard back from cedric and he's not going to be able to join us tonight unfortunately um but i wanted to speak to this um question about public versus not public mm -hmm. um and i've already expressed this to you paul but um i think that we have really seen demonstrated through um you know both through the conversation initially with um the chief around how they don't hear from the community um, and then we were able to talk about why there are so many barriers to people being able to communicate what's actually going on in their lives um, with um, the police or anybody who's in authority in terms of town government. And so for that reason, I, I feel really strongly that if you're actually seeking to understand what's going on for people, it really needs to be non-public. Um, because the people who are most um, threatened by our current system are people who um, have all sorts of vulnerabilities, including, um, you know, citizenship, documentation, uh, other um, family members who are already dealing with the, um, the police or the criminal justice system, uh, DCF involvement, um, where bringing more concerns would make them for further vulnerable. Um, and so to actually get the real stories, um, I really uh, feel strongly that it needs to be not only non-public, but something that's um, actually community-based and chosen and not um, something that's under the governance of the town. And as distance as you can make yourself from the selection process, um, there's still an aspect to which we're under you, we're under the council, you know, in this setting and in that setting too. And uh, an actual like, um, you know, in other examples that I've read about, about, I'm forgetting the word right now, but when people, when towns have groups that give feedback to the police, they're not under the government. They're usually a independent, what's the word that they're called? Um, they, they keep the police accountable, but they can only do that if they're not under the, the authority of the police, which like the police and the town governance are together. So if the town governance is an authority over it, I don't think they can actually hold the police accountable. Um, and that's what I'm hoping that we will be able to form in our town is an accountability system that supports people being able to be honest and vulnerable without them having to put themselves at further risk. Um, and that's one of the main reasons why we as a human rights commission have had to acknowledge that people can't bring their human rights complaints to us. 
because we're public. And so like that very nature makes it so that people can't actually um, share with us what we're supposed to be able to help them with. No, I, and I think this sort of um, tension between being open and accessible and visible, which which in government is is the there's a lot of advocacy to say you got to be more transparent. That's why we like that these are Zoom meetings and be, can be recorded versus the ability for people to really express what they're able to do in a in a private setting, which is also a crucial need. I think figuring out how to make that happen, um, you know. I am employed by the town of Amherst, I, you know, and that's that's our governance structure gives certain uh, responsibilities to certain bodies, the town council, the town manager, whoever it is, the human rights commission. Um, and those we are government. But, you know, I think, you know, honestly, you know, learning how um, Healthy Hampshire and the MV MVP program was able to sort of step outside that through contracts with consultants or something who have can who use a community organizing model. Um, or a, a trusted uh, neighbor friend, um, you know, you know, I mean, the schools have our, our reservoir of a lot of trust in, in our community and utilizing some of those existing avenues outside of the public meeting process is really what we're going to have to do. And we're going to have to invest in that. That's, that doesn't just happen. You have to invest into people's time to make that happen. So I think that might be what this committee might say, we're going to be public but we need someone to go on, just for like the ECA Energy and Climate Action Committee said, we need to be connecting with folks. They're not coming to the ECAC. They're, we're getting all that really valuable stuff in a different forum. forum. And I think that that's been a, a, an eye opener for us and to see how successful that's been in, um, in being able to make it do a better job at that. And this isn't just a one-time thing, like let's get this thing done and be done with it. It's gotta build this sort of community organizing model, I think, if we can do that um, and their support financially to do that in the town, I think that will be a, a, a real benefit for us. And this sort of builds into the social, the lack of social services that the town has. So I think one of our things um, that we're gonna be looking at with our budget is like, how do we start to build? And I think, you know, looking at different, um, it's, it's, a it's a bad time in town government, obviously with our town finances, but. Um, how do we start to prioritize these things and make say these are important things to do? I know Paul has to step off in uh, just a couple of minutes. Um, I, I think it's been helpful to hear um, about this possibility of, of the committee and um, and for us to think about either um, you know whether we would know people who should be on this type of committee or, you know, we can be thoughtful and encouraging people to engage. However, the engagement ends up occurring, right? Which I think is still something that is going to be worked out uh, moving forward. Are, are there any other um, questions for, for Paul about this before he needs to, to step off? And I, not to put you on the spot, but I just have heard other folks mentioning that the model of the school equity task force would be um, a good one for Paul to consider. I was wondering if you might be able to share, like, is that committee like under the authority of the school? Is it separate? How did they do that? Is it beneficial to have it that way? Yeah, so it's a, it's a subcommittee of the school committee. So there, there is kind of a, I don't want to say answering to the, uh, the school committee. So, I mean, we're, we're part of the district by default, but it's, it's been, it's been good because like you have like the, uh, the non-committee, non-school committee members that can basically say what I can't always necessarily say. And so it's, it's kind of like an ad, like, I don't know, it's sort of an, a direct and efficient avenue to kind of speak truth to power, like, even if sometimes it's me that they're speaking to at the meetings. But, but no, I, I think it's, it's a pretty solid model. But, but I also do think you need external advocacy as well at the same time. Like that, that's kind of like, SETF is kind of more how I, I vision what, what we're talking about as far as a public group, but yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's my two cents. All right, any other comments uh, while we have Paul on? Well, Paul, thank you for yep. joining us. Thank you. And Liz and Erica and Cedric, I'm so glad you're all going to be part of this. Um, you bring a lot of strength to this committee. So thank you for stepping up. See you, everybody. Bye, Paul. All right. Um, so there are a couple of other things on our agenda. Uh, one is, you know, we're still trying to figure out, and I don't have an answer for this, so I'm, I'm looking for other people to help think through some of this stuff, um, how we're going to interact and how we're going to form, uh, continue to maintain uh, conversations and uh, maintain a sense of, of community um, in order to talk through, deal with some of the issues that uh, we wanted to deal with. Um, so again, we had the last conversation we had uh, was the webinar July 11th, I think it was, um, on on uh, anti-racism. We have had some uh, quiet since then, and I'm sure it's not because um, it's nothing other than the fact that we're all probably really involved in a lot of other spaces. Um, so which I think is is great. I, I think that uh, we're probably all doing things. I, I know I'm uh, working on with speakers coming into my like workplace over the next couple of weeks. We're going to be speaking on indigenous rights on uh, this upcoming Thursday on um, qualified immunity for police officers and, and how that leads to uh, other discrimination issues over time. And we're specifically going to be looking at that in the Springfield uh, area on October 1st. Um, and so to the extent that uh, I'm, these events or conferences open to the public and y'all are not at those moments at work or at, at uh, in class or what have you, I will uh, try to share information on those types of things happening. And I hope we can all do that uh, for each other, share events that are occurring so that we can um, maintain momentum where we feel we're dealing with some of the issues or at least trying to help think through uh, some of the issues that are relating to the racial and ethnic disparities that we're seeing right now. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm obviously also concerned that as we're heading into the winter and um, as uh, governmental uh, supplements um, to help people who are, are employment insecure at this point, you know, that we are uh, going to see further issues. One of the things I liked about the, um, the possibility of this committee is um, looking at how we have the information or, or what information we don't have um, on how people in our, in our community are being treated differently. Uh, I think it's going to be really important for us and it would be helpful for us um, to have the data, whether it's uh, quantitative, something that's been collected by the town or qualitative, if we have a way of uh, a community uh, outreach and, and in-reach uh, event or, or some kind of mechanism that lets us uh, have a better sense of what the concerns are, in addition to uh, the broader survey that I know um, Jen Moyston has been uh, working on as well. So, um, but if there are, I know we talked about trying to have speakers coming in um, this fall, and we said that we'd put off uh, planning on something for September because we just didn't, um, we thought that we needed more time and we wanted to have the commission enlarged before we uh, try to engage in more uh, activities. But, you know, now we're looking at the events that we have every year. Um, so we have events coming up uh, at least in December where historically we've done a reading of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and um, allowed for a sense of community and discussion and 
donuts or, or something afterwards. I don't know what we're going to be able to do this year, uh, whether there's a way for us to get together um, and to create a sense of community. We'll see what um, October, November, December bring to us. Um, Jen, was that you wanting to, to say something? I do. So I just want to say that if anybody has ideas about something to do moving up, which is what you're getting at um, in October, October, well, maybe October might be a little too soon, but in some period in the fall, then, you know, you can um, say your ideas now. And I also wanted to say that the, I've been on an equity task force with the chamber and um, they want to do a survey too that goes out to the community. So I'm, it, it either needs to be that somehow we can work them together or, um, or that we, the town on itself just lets the chamber do it or one or the other, because I don't want to have people to fill out two surveys. Um, and I just also want to mention that the town is now enrolled in the GARE. I don't know if I talked about that last time, which the Governance Alliance for Racial Equity. And so we are starting inside with staff and training staff. So we have an equity task workforce or no ec core equity team. I have like way too many task force and such in my head. Um, so there's a core team that's been meeting and we will start there and then branch out from us. So I think to the rest of the town staff and then after town staff, including the hiring practice and the recruiting, the way that we recruit. So all of those things will be taken into consideration to make them be more um, equitable and accessible and to get them out to a broader uh, recipient, more, more folks. So we're really excited to have that start, you know, to be, have that going on in the town right now. So hopefully that can help. And I'm just going to say the Human Rights Day, we can do virtually. So any event that we were doing, um, the flag raising, I think we could do it very similar to the same way that we did Juneteenth, where we get um, Amherst Media involved and they can um, broadcast the, the flag raising and us, you know, going over the declaration. And it, it might work like that for the... Puerto Rican Heritage Month in November as well. Been talking to Martha about that. So that's it. Is it Kaya? So um, I, I, I could be wrong, but the piece on the agenda about um, just the role of the, like what we all do on um, this commission and how it works, um, I think that was related to when I had asked that question. Is that correct? That that's. So yeah, you had posed that, and and I had, um, I think, we have touched on it, but not really gone through it. So I wanted, I thought this would be a really good time with new commissioners on. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I think, like what, like everything that Jennifer just said is a perfect example of how, like. Jennifer is extraordinary and, you know, has a full-time job with the town, but does a ton of legwork to support the, really the, just the ideas that this commission has. And um, from my experience for the past year, I feel like um, watching other committees, like the committee members do substantial leg work like they have homework that they do not homework but that's like a convenient word for you know for working towards whatever the goals are of the committee and i feel like we have unrealistically relied on jennifer to do a lot of the leg work um which i really appreciate you um and think you know you're extraordinary and have done an incredible job on so many things but i would like to see um us as a commission really talk about as a group um like how we can be more hands-on in terms of um supporting the goals that we're trying to set and then also to better understand like 
what does it mean that um, we have a chair? What does it mean when, you know, certain activities are only, or certain decisions are only what we decide on in these meetings? And then there's other things that the chair does outside of what's talked about and discussed and decided upon in these meetings. Um, and just trying to better understand uh, how we are gonna work together um, and what our roles are. Great. Um, so I can only speak from, from my experience, both as having been on the commission and, and having chaired the commission. Uh, and that is um, over the years, we've had um, different activities and, and different ways for people to engage. So when, um, when we had uh, Carol Ross on the commission and she uh, got funding to do, um, I think it was coming together. Uh, I, I don't want to conflate the different entities within town, but uh, we had a one year um, a grant that she managed and uh, she was able to uh, do some programming. Uh, we had uh, discussions around movies that she brought in. Uh, and I think that it was a way for us to have uh, some discussions around uh, around equity issues in the town. Um, I I have been pushing for the last couple of years for if there are are people who are um, you know the 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 better uh, planners uh, who want to serve on the commission and uh, who love events and um, and want to bring people together. Um, that's that isn't always my skill set, and I recognize that. And so, uh, trying to figure out what it means for us to have different skill sets uh, is important. Um, with regard to what we do when we aren't, um, what the roles are when when we're between meetings, I think that's uh, an important question. So. You are a, once you have signed on, you are a commissioner um, and, and once you've, you've been sworn in. Uh, and so that means that you can always speak as for yourself while you're someone who is also on the commission. Um, and that will sometimes mean that uh, people will uh, ask your opinion, ask you to speak at things. Um, and I think that that is perfectly fine as long as it's clear that you're you're speaking uh, for yourself um, and that you're someone who the town recognizes and, as uh, bringing something to the Human Rights Commission as well. The people who we bring onto the commission are usually people who are already very active in town. Uh, and so there are two ways of of viewing that. Um, one is that together we could be like uh, some kind of um, uh, like like the Justice League or something where if we all pulled together we could do re remarkable amazing incredible things. Um, that would be my hope that that's that's the dream. Um, it's also um, that we can recognize that um, people are doing remarkable things um, in between meetings and and that we want to be a place where we will continue to support you uh, when you when you come back um, if there's a question of how do we plug this in who else should we be talking with in town um, that we would be a resource for each other in that way um, this is is uh, one perspective and I, I'll say that there's in the bylaw, um, there uh, is a differentiation for uh, things that are brought to the um, human uh, rights director and, and uh, things that get communicated to the chair of the commission. Um, there are also, uh, historically, although this isn't something that's written into any bylaw, the opportunity for people who are working um, in town or, or there's an issue that gets brought to the attention of the chair of the commission. Um, and 
because of some of the concerns Gazit Hai raised earlier uh, with regard to things not being public that would be discussed with the chair and sometimes uh, mediated uh, with the chair uh, that don't come to the commission. And when that has occurred, I've tried to uh, report generally back uh, to the commission uh, um, in public meeting about uh, the issues that seem to be coming up. So um, I, I will say that um, some of us who have been in the same position for a few years would be more than happy uh, to allow others to be in, in those positions. I'm just going to um, point out that one of the things um, that I, uh, while I love seeing um, everyone's faces, um, kind of moderating meetings is not my favorite thing. Um, I would I much prefer to be able to listen to everybody and uh, and think and then opine uh, once in a while. And uh, that's just uh, my own nature. But um, if if there are others, uh, the other things that occur obviously is that um, for chairing is, uh, you know, occasionally you will uh, be asked if the if the commission has an interest in something. At which point I have to say I can't speak for the commission. I can invite you to come speak to the commission, and uh, and we can figure out if there's room for um, for something. I, I will give the example of um, I, I heard a couple of months ago before we were going to have the the first conversation on anti-racism. Um, I, I was invited to moderate that kind of discussion by the chair of the town council. I said, I am a person who lives in this town and, and if there's gonna be a conversation, I'd like to be able to participate and I wouldn't wanna moderate myself. Um, however, if it's something that you'd like the Human Rights Commission uh, to be involved in, please come to the Human Rights Commission meeting and talk with us about it. Um, and that's the conversation that we had where uh, the commission ended up saying, um, thank you, but we, we can do that without having involvement of the town council, which was a little bit odd because again, she had, had brought up the possibility and wanted us to somehow manage it, um, but on behalf of the town. I think that that raises some of the questions um, about what our, our role is as either a representative of the town facing outward to the people who live in the town or vice versa, whether we sometimes push back against what the town council or town manager might be trying to do and we challenge and we question. And I think our role historically has been a bit of both. Um, and I look forward to continuing to do that, but um, you know, I, I'm, always willing to hear other thoughts and, and other directions we could go. Gazit Hai, please. Yeah, I think that you touched on one of the um, just thoughts I had as, you know, when I first came in last year, I was still trying to figure out what this whole thing was about and had never been in anything where you had to do like a, I make a motion and like a I and abstain and all that um, stuff. So I was just trying to figure out what was even happening here um, and trying to understand what does it mean that you're the chair. And I think that I had the impression at first that you had some special set of like you needed to have some special set of skills or some special like knowledge or that you were some, you know, required to do something vastly different than the rest of us. But as I've been exposed to more committees in town, um, other than this one, I've realized that really even the moderating part that you mentioned is not something that chairs always do. You know, there's um, many examples of different um, committees and I feel like, you know, it'd be interesting. You, you have been chair for three years and I think, you know, you've, you've been very committed to this, which I really respect. Um, and I think it would be interesting to, um, it, you know, and when I first came, you said you would like 
to consider somebody else taking over as chair and you've said it again and I think that it would be um, interesting to allow you to take that different role and also to allow someone else to um, feel what being chair um, could mean for them and to consider not requiring so much of the chair and so much of um, Jennifer, but letting things be distributed amongst us um, more. And that um, really, from, from the exposure I've had to other committees, it seems like any of us could be an effective chair. Um, and that really what it comes down to is, um, you know, being, being when we get those, that feedback that needs to be then brought to the group that we do that responsibly and that we, you know, make sure that we're doing the whole, is there a motion thing? Um, but even I think I have starting to figure that piece out. Um, so yeah, I guess I'd just like to bring it to the group to consider um, if there's someone else that feels like they might be willing to um, try out that role and, and to consider that, you know, we could even use a model like some other committees um, use of having a vice um, chair or like a, I forget what it's called, like an assistant chair so that the one person doesn't feel like they're holding all of it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to bring that to the group. Okay, um, before we um, discuss that a little further, I should tell you that the other uh, components um, the other responsibilities is that uh, you're you're responsible for um, pulling together the agenda. Um, so if there is anyone who is passionate ab about this and, and really would love to do it, um, I, I'd be happy for you to, to do that. Um, and again, uh, it's it's those those calls uh, as well from people between meetings. So that's been less in the last um, some months, other than also serving on uh, the committee that helps consider our, our new members. So that's another component of it. So I just wanted to make clear what the different aspects are of it so that if, uh, if people are interested, because I, I certainly think that a healthy organization is one that has that kind of change from time to time. And, uh, and I tend to think that um, three years of one person in a position is perhaps a, a bit uh, too long. Um, that's just my view. But uh, so I, I think what uh, I'm hearing is a call for um, those who might be interested because we're starting a new year, we have new people, um, and it's it's an opportunity for us to make a decision as a group. Uh, I'm happy to, to, if you'd like, wait till our next meeting and hopefully if we can have everyone there and that way we know if uh, there are those who are not uh, currently here who might be interested, uh, we can involve them and, and uh, have them be part of that conversation. Uh, are there any uh, any other questions about what the, the roles have been, Deborah? Um, I like the idea of waiting until Sid and Cedric are here. Um, I appreciate Gazit Haya the way you brought that up. That you know it is it does feel like um, Matthew and Jennifer just sort of do everything, and I just sit in on a meeting and listen. And um, you know, and, it, and I like the idea of making it more participatory with each of us holding more responsibility, you know, for the meeting. Um, I think uh, the question, I wasn't entirely clear um, whether it is it, it written into the bylaw that the chair has to facilitate the meeting and, um, and also has to be the one to prepare the agenda, or can, could those be two responsibilities that other people just take on so there's less weight on the chair's shoulders? Uh, I believe the agenda is uh, written into the bylaws. Um, as far as chairing the committee, uh, meet, the commission meetings, I don't think that that is written in there, but I think it's just been the practice since the, as, as far as I know, since the commission has been uh, in existence is that whoever's chairing the commission, that your, your kind of main role as chairing the commission is chairing the meeting of the commission. Uh, but 
uh, as Gazikaya points out, outside of that, um, you don't need to have a, uh, a special skill set. Um, you know, I think everyone who is invited to serve on the commission and who agrees to do so um, has shown one that they have the ability to work well with other people and uh, and two that they have the bravery to um, to manage uh, a meeting certainly and uh, and so I think it, it's something that we would uh, we like, would imagine that any one of, of you who are here would be able to handle and handle well. So I know that um, I think it makes sense to consider that two of our members are not here and that this is, you know, a really important um, topic to get input on. And I'd, I'd love to hear from, you know, Petua and Ben um, who have been here for the last year um, too. And I, I guess what I'm thinking is, um, if we could consider putting it on the agenda for the next meeting that we would have um, the opportunity to possibly nominate um, someone else for the chair or to have someone, you know, express interest and that we would all think thoughtfully about that in preparation for the next meeting. But I want to hear from um, others too, while we have the topic tonight. Um, I I think we should um, wait until we have the other committee members, um, just so we have everyone here. Um, but I do think it would be, it should be on the agenda next year to like nominate or show interest in like becoming a committee member. And then maybe, I mean, not a committee, uh, a uh, chair of the committee. Um, that would be interesting. And yeah, and just maybe if, I think like, say, say like if, we could have um, opportunities for people, the for Matthew to, um, like mentor that person, whoever. If we do change that person, like so, just so they know what to do, um, exactly, because <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, I think that's that's all I want to say. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We can hear you. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I I agree. We should definitely have it on the agenda for. The next meeting, and I'm with, I'm with Petua on the on the uh, the carryover crossover concept as well. But I, I think that's worthy of discussion as well. So. Yeah, sometimes people who want to just have a break and do it their own way, um, you know, prefer a little bit less of the the kind of mentorship. But if they if that is helpful, I'm I'm happy to. Uh, if if that's the direction that we go, I'm happy to um, to discuss that. Jennifer. So I just um, want to say too, though, this is a really good time to kind of um, explore the different duties that everyone is responsible for or should be responsible for. And so that within being chair, the role can change and the, you're still chair, but we can we can change the things that are Put on the chair particularly if you have a vice chair too because then there's shared weight there so i um i i have no comment on waiting or whatever any of that but i would just like to say that this is a great opportunity to kind of redefine if needed regardless of who is chair right so um it's just a good it gives you guys the opportunity to redefine and then add that vice chair piece if you would like yeah and i just want to respond quickly that um Every year that I've been on, we've tried to do something a little bit different. And so to the extent that um, we're looking for just continuity, the continuity that we have thus far is the continuity of change. Um, so that's uh, if there's someone who has different ideas. So we have done in the past um, a, a li liaison role for each of the commissioners um, so that there was work between each meeting of actually uh, finding out what was happening in town on certain issues. Um, so that is how Sid got involved in housing issues, for example, 
um, because he went over uh, as a liaison and then was drafted in to being on that committee as well. So um, that's a, a be careful what, what you volunteer for situation. Um, and, and we had other people who uh, tried to volunteer in, in different areas and sometimes found that a bit overwhelming. Uh, so someone who volunteered to go to uh, meetings of two other human rights commissions so that we would be able to kind of work with other towns and have a, um, something that was broader uh, than just a perspective of Amherst. It was a really great idea. It was not tenable. Um, so that's the type of thing that um, we have tried to do as far as um, creating work between meetings of uh, making sure that we, I think we uh, recognize that we were part of different uh, organizations that were active in town. Um, and we came back and reported on on some of the good work that those organizations were doing as well. So those are, are things that we have done between meetings. This past year obviously was very truncated and we um, are still trying to revamp um, the, the thinking that we had last November that we were hoping to get underway in the, in, over the course of this calendar year. And we stopped after, after your birthday, Kazikai. Um, uh, and so that, uh, that was the end of February for those of you who were not here at the time. Um, and so we've only gotten things back up again a bit since our meeting June 6th, I think was the first time we met since February uh, because of the pandemic. So um, as we are trying to pull together what our work will look like for this upcoming year, I would recommend that we don't try to make a plan for a calendar year just because of the turnover uh, and instead do it uh, through June and July, uh, possibly through August, so that um, the next group of people who come in, if there's three new people, for example, or two new people, uh, that they can be part of the plan for the following year as well. Um, but that that was um, the the discussion of our roles and uh, and the roles that you should feel comfortable stepping into. Uh, I really do believe that uh, other than those who might be um, going off, if that's how schools work in a year, um, other than those uh, people, that uh, you know we would be uh, lucky to have any of you uh, continue to, to kind of broaden what we do as a commission. So um, I look forward to continuing to discuss that. Um, questions for, because I guess we don't have any uh, recommendations right now for planning a, a specific conversation for November. And I know for me, things are, are piling up and backing up um, with other events. Um, but if we do have uh, something that, or, or if there's someone who would feel really comfortable uh, reaching out and uh, liaising with the, um, the uh, uh, BID and Chamber of Commerce, um, if, if there's someone who would be really excited about that, that's fine. Um, if uh, Jennifer is the only one who's in touch with them and knows what their survey's about, um, I would be happy to try in the next month to uh, reach out to Gabrielle Gould and touch with. Is it Gabrielle, Jennifer, or is it someone else? You're still on mute. <laughs> you froze a second, so but I think I. It picked up. So it's Gabrielle. No, it's um, it's Claudia. Claudia. Pasmani. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anyone else who uh, wants to engage on the uh, question of and and then report back to us if we have time in the next month um, on. What, a, what it would be like to have a town um, human rights 
sponsored survey and uh, something that would also come from the Chamber of Commerce. Are you talking about trying to combine efforts with the Chamber survey and the if survey that, that you've been working on? Yeah, if that makes sense. Jennifer, do you have an idea on this oh, or think that? Yeah, that I mean, I'm sitting on their equity task force. That's the only reason why I know. And that's the group that would be sending out the survey. And while I, I do welcome, but I'm just saying I'm. You're there, you've got it. I'm already there, but what I will say is if we do decide to move forward with the survey where we will need the help from the commissioners is making sure that it goes out to the community members. And so what we what seems to happen often is that people forget that they're, the members that are already tapped into town government will know that the survey is there because they will just go on the website. We need to go out deeper into the community and get the voices of those who we don't usually hear from. So I've also been going following the mobile market lately in an effort to do outreach. So, and all, and we have these really cool masks. Oh, I should send you guys all the, the great masks. They're Town of Amherst masks. Um, sure. But... I saw yes. that, sorry. I want okay. one. I want one. And I'm so <laughs> mad that I had to see it through another co-worker. You this are going to get in trouble for that, Jennifer, because my son has <laughs> one, and I was like, okay, where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you um, brought that up because I wanted to bust it on that. <laughs> yes, I know. I it was a great. I had so much fun doing that. Um. So, and I just also want to say, like, part of what I like to do is events because I'm doing outreach, right? Um. But what ends up happening is. I just, from creation to end, I end up with the project. So it's, I need the help in the middle, right? Um, because it, the, the outreach serves as a dual or more than dual for me because I've got the HR recruiting piece, I've got the human rights piece and I've got the um, community participation officer. So all of that, I mean, these events I would be at anyway, somehow, some way, but um, the survey, again, is that it's going to require us to be hands-on if possible or as hands-on as possible as we can be. Mm -hmm. Did you raise your hand, Liz? Um, if you need help going out in the community and um, some of our um, places, especially the places where we've done food deliveries, where people are underrepresented, I did the food deliveries up until school started. And it was a wonderful opportunity for me to network with other people, see the kids, see their joy when they got their meals, talk to some other people who were just meandering by. And um, so if you need help going out into the community, going to the boulders, knocking on some doors, mm -hmm. um, trying to be there when they do the food deliveries, when some of the parents come pick up the food saying, hey, we have this quick survey. Do you mind taking a few minutes to fill it out? That's the kind of thing that I like to do. Great. And that's with you. That, with you. <laughs> that's that's fantastic. And then so we're also, if you guys know, we will need translators, right? So I know that we already have Spanish and Sid says Portuguese, but it, we um and then say how. So I found out like the Cambodian community isn't most likely won't oh I don't want to say they won't read the the survey, but it's better I think that they have more conversations from what I was informed by um, um, say how like it, it's just easier if they they just talk um, in person about it so reaching out to say how I don't know does everybody know say how um, he's fantastic he is I would say he is the Cambodian ambassador really I mean he is just fantastic in that way um, so well, yeah, I think, Jennifer, if you can really, um, like, when it's ready, if we can sit down and divvy up these places amongst us, I think, you know, um, then we can attach an interpreter to whoever, mm -hmm. you know, and make it conversation. Mm -hmm. I think really conversation's better for most people. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But if we, if we can commit to, you know, taking our, you know, taking the different spots um, once the survey is ready, then that's something I, I would definitely be a part of too. 
and the other thing about the survey is it's it, i'm not sure that it's as it it's so hard because it's you have to be very um particular about a survey and have a direct target right so our direct target is kind of like we just want to hear in general from the community about what their issues are so that we can help educate them further on those or help them in whatever way that we can so it's like really do we ask these really general questions or do we get more specific like and i and i'll send the survey back out because we have three new members but i will say i only heard back from well i think there's only five of you guys right so i heard from three people out of the six that were already there that are already members so i just i need some like i think it it might need to be more words specific or i don't know but it's we don't we just so uh, and i have to see um, what the chamber wants to do i don't yeah so I, I just wanted to say that the League of Women Voters uh, was trying to figure out what information um, the, the town has. And so uh, I, I did have a conversation for um, an hour with people from, from the League of Women Voters of just what information we don't have or um, that doesn't come through the Human Rights Commission. Uh, and uh, uh, they were trying to pull together um, people who do polling and, and uh, not polling maybe, but, but um, who do quantitative and qualitative analysis from the um, local universities uh, or university and colleges to see if there's a way to, to kind of gather information. I think that, that that conversation might be part of what um, has led to some of the uh, components of this uh, committee that will be chosen by a committee um, that Paul was was talking about is um, how do we um, figure out what information we can gather from the community that's specific to the um, question of the community safety um, question as opposed to things more broadly but uh, I, I think if we're trying to figure out how to reach out uh, and how to provide additional information and what information people want, um, you know, the the question of what should be narrow and what should be broad and, and what questions we should ask, um, I think it's tough. And, uh, and you know, I, I think a lot of people are are struggling to figure out how do we um, find out from our broader community what conversations we should be having. And so I, I think it's great that the Chamber of Commerce is trying to figure it out too. Um, but but I, I think it's hard to figure out exactly what those, what we're, information we're hoping to get with the questions and what we're promising in return. Um, but Deb had her hand up. Okay. And then let's see. Um, just real quick, it's been weeks since you sent that out, Jennifer, so I actually can't exactly remember, but I think the survey had to do with educational events and forums and webinars and stuff, wasn't it? Um, like, what it kinds was, of conversations would you like to see happening in the town? It was, it was a little bit of everything, right? The, the, yeah. the webinar piece came out only because so many people spoke about the fact that they couldn't break out into breakout sessions at the previous at the community yeah. conversations which i still you know i just i just make the event you know i just help with the events so the, the flip side and so the rest of it was more geared to to equity and in and um equality issues such as like oh my gosh have you experienced or have you seen or racial and you know how have you seen it can you describe an event that's happened or something that's happened to you can you describe what you saw that happened to somebody as a bystander and then part of it was yes like how would you like to be educated would you prefer to be um in a more hands-on task oriented way or do you want to deal with policy and procedures like it 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 kind of hit a little bit of everything but you know i can also say that we could just hold workshops and that could just be it right like we could just, just say we are just going to just start one that's on on cultural humility and then that's it 
right? And then we can kind of find out that way. We can just go down the main topics of it and, fig and find out that way too. It doesn't necessarily have to be the survey, but you know, I'm just trying to throw out as, it's so hard now because we can't yeah, do anything we're, live. We're not really right? gathering. One other question I have is, um, do you, is the chamber at all interested in combining efforts or is this a conversation that we still have to have with them? I was unclear. Oh no, I'm having the, we've had the conversation. And they're open to? Yes. This. Okay. I think one survey is better than two. I don't think we want well, a, a, us to send our own and the chamber to send one. I think that's. And I think that <laughs> that's why we decided that if we were both going to do it, that we would combine them because I'm honestly, if I had two surveys too close together, I might just like, you know. So the only thing I'd say on that is if, if we had a very different reason for doing the survey, like if the, the chamber wants to know how people will come back out in town and what will get them engaged and like that would be a very different thing than, than uh, what we would be concerned about. So, but if, if they're just, you know, giving a different survey, then, then that's fine. Um, Liz. So I just wanted to hit on something that both Deborah and Jennifer said in, um, we just need to be careful about the surveys because because of COVID and the opening of school and the hybrid model versus this model. Uh, some of our families have been surveyed to death in the last couple of weeks, a month, a month or so. Um, so just, I'm not sure what the timeline is for the survey. I just want us all to be aware of that. And when we're talking about community events, I can't wait till we have another block party. Okay, I'm done. Um, so I, the, the chamber's survey is to serve similar, the same, the same need The we're looking for the same information, right? Basically like, because at the end of the day, the, the, the residents support the businesses and the businesses support the residents. So if you go into a business and you feel like you've been treated unfairly, right? Then that's the kind of thing that you would answer in their survey and our survey, right? Because we're asking you what kind of experiences have you had or have you witnessed or seen? So they're very similar. They're not really like what's going to make you come back. It's more geared to racial and equity and, and it, like things like, would it be helpful if there was a grocery store in town or do you have transportation? So it's, it's all of, it's all of those types of things that are, that it's about, which I think um, is good. And again, we don't necessarily, nor does the chamber have to do the survey. We, again, we, can just host events and we'll get that information and it might move a little faster. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. Erica. Um, I kind of want to follow up on what Jen and Liz were saying. Um, I'm kind of concerned about the survey stuff. Um, a, for the same reasons that we're listed, but I think the communities that we really want to reach how many of them are actually going to do the surveys? Um, and for various reasons, whether it's technology purposes, language purposes, et cetera, I, and I think the communities that we really want to reach do better, I feel like do better, and we will do better as a commission if we actually have a like conversation whether it be held by Zoom or we get out there on a Saturday morning and we just have flyers out there and let the community know like, hey, we're having this, we're here to have a conversation. And I think we'll have better, a better outcome if we go out and reach out to them to where they feel safe. And I think they'll have a better chance to open up if we find a neutral territory or go on to meet them to where they're at, if that makes sense. So that's just what my two cents are because I'm kind of over the survey thing personally. <laughs> Can I just do a time check in? Are we going to like- We're, we're a little over. I recognize that. Um, I, I thought uh, that because 
people seem to be happy to continue discussing things. I will acknowledge that while I'm leaving this, I made my dinner before we started and I'm, I'm going to eat it at some point. Um, so I, I wouldn't mind us um, finishing up. One of the things that I'll, I'll point out is if we look at, again, a, a very short um, minutes that just shows what we can actually vote on and what decisions we've made, uh, we'll see that we have really thought through things well together, which I think is a very good thing, but that um, there aren't that many uh, decisions that we've made for um, what exactly we're doing moving forward. And so I think it's helpful to just have that, um, that minute so that we're able to, um, to decide if we want to hit on specific items that we want to feel ready to make a decision on when we get to our next meeting, and we want to put that on the agenda, uh, then we're able to see that a little bit more easily than recognizing the wonderful conversations that we've had that help us understand each other and, and understand uh, you know, how we think we're, we're interacting with our, our community. So that's just a, um, something for us to think about. Um, and Deb, if, if it's, um, you, you had something to say, and, and uh, I agree with Gizzy kind of that, that we are over time, um, but. Yeah, I was just going to respond to Erica that I, I under normal circumstances, I 100% agree with you. And just during COVID, I just don't know how, you know, if um, how we make we make that reach, you know, how we reach out like that. I know I appreciate it, even though I don't I have limited time, but I did appreciate the school surveys because I, it, I felt like it gave me an opportunity to have a voice in the discussion, which otherwise I would not have felt. But I do hear that concern that not everybody um, will want to participate in a, in that you know in that format, and um, we we do have to figure out how to reach people who won't or can't. I just you know with COVID, I just don't know how we do that. So that's my that's my only concern. And is a limited survey better than no no survey? I just like I don't yeah. Can I, I just want to jump in real quick because I know we all are ready to go. Um, but my dog is like, I'm ready for a walk. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the things that I've been trying to do is join in with other already established organizations that are, you know, currently they're doing things outside. So that works. But that's also a really good way to reach a, a different population, right? Because so... That's how I ended up at the mobile market. And the lunch drop-offs. I think those are two mm -hmm. places and that we can masks just like jump in and we can be safe and socially distanced and like even have, you know, ask people the questions and have that and we can like market for them so that we're not having to like pass pens and papers. And that's running like till December? Hmm? Is it running till December? Is that yeah. what I heard? Yeah. At minimum? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're good for, we're, they've changed the sites, but they're still like at the complexes. Okay. Um, but, but I'll, again, it could be a both and instead of an either or. So um, we could reach, make sure we're not missing those, um, those voices um, that might be missed through just uh, something over email or something on a website. Um, and also collect data from people through a, a website or through, you know, however, however the survey uh, would generally go out to reach as broad a population as possible. All right. Um, well, this was our kind of more introductory meeting for our new members, as well as our kind of startup for uh, what we're hoping to do this fall. I want to take this opportunity again to uh, welcome uh, Liz and Erica and, and say hello to everybody else too. Um, but uh, I need to ask for a motion to adjourn if, if uh, there's no further business. I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Is there a second? second All in favor? All right. Have a great night, everybody. We are adjourned and I'll see you soon. Thanks, Liz and Erica. Nice to meet you guys.
Bye, Good everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night.